Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about building single page applications and hosting those in Power Pages. I'm going to walk you through how to create your very first very simple Hello World website. Now, of course, we know Power Pages has a lot of great features to build powerful websites. They're connected directly to Dataverse. Makers can build web pages with static content, especially even with data components like lists and forms. We can even add things like multi step forms, custom web template components. We can even add agents to these. Now, all of these great features, there's going to be situations where you're going to want to have greater flexibility and control over these user interface components. And you want to build it using tools like Vue, Angular, and React. Now, the cool thing is Microsoft recently announced the ability to bring your own code so you can bring your own React, Angular, and Vue applications, create, create single page applications, and host these in Power Pages. This is really going to bring the best of both worlds. It's going to bring Power Pages security, authentication, and the ability to host a website and the power of building a web application with AI assisted tools like GitHub Copilot using a framework like React Angular Review. Now you might be wondering, what are single page applications? Well, a single, applic single page application really just loads a web page once and then updates parts of it with JavaScript, lays as you navigate through a full page with no reloads. It fetches the data in the background so it feels like an actual app. So when you talk about React, React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces from small reusable components. Really efficiently updates the screen with data changes using a virtual data object model. Now it makes these apps fast, interactive, and really easy to create and scale, especially single page applications. So let's dive right into it. All right, confession time. I've not really built a lot of React apps. I'm actually in the process of learning React. Um, I've not really done TypeScript. I've done a lot of stuff in JavaScript. I've built websites using .NET back in the day. I built things in JavaScript and HTML. I've even used Power Automate to create what we call Jamstack sites. So all of this is relatively new to me, but I have this friend, it's called Copilot, and GitHub Copilot is going to help me build a very simple React site today that we're going to upload into Power Pages to show you the ability of how we can use Power Pages to host a single page application. All right, so I'm in Visual Studio Code. A couple things to do. You want to make sure that when you install the extensions that you have the Power Platform tools installed. You can make sure that's installed. And then you're also going to want to make sure you installed Node.js on your machine because you're going to need some of these tools as well. All right, now that we have the extensions figured out, I'm going to turn on GitHub Copilot. Now, you will need GitHub Copilot to do this, or you could do it straight up if you're adventurous. Um, I kind of need GitHub Copilot because, like I said, I'm learning. And, of course, we're going to add a prompt. So here I'm just going to add my prompt in. I'm going to basically say, create a simple React app that simply displays Hello World. I'm going to use the agent mode for this. We're going to hit send. And now GitHub Copilot is going to tell me to create an empty folder as a workspace to continue the workplace creation. All right. So let's um, do that. All right. So it's created my Hello World interface. And let's continue the setup. Now the first thing it's going to do is run command to terminal npx create vit that latest template react. So basically here we are creating the scaffolding for our new react app using vit in the current directory. So I'm just going to hit continue there. And we see here it is installed some of the scaffolding. We have some of the index HTML, JSON file, readme, some vit config stuff. Looks good. Now let's continue to install those dependencies. Now it has come up with some uh, interesting stuff here, basically wanting to change some of this stuff. This is GitHub Copilot. The green is what it wants to change. Um, in true vibe coding fashion, we are just going to continue on with it. We're going to keep all of this. We have the function half. It's going to return hello world uh, HTML. It's going to export the default app. That's great. Now I'll actually continue this. And it's basically told me my React app is now running. We can visit localhost 5173 to see Hello World displayed. All right, let's check it out. And yep, sure enough, I have a very simple Hello World React app. Didn't take me very long, of course, using GitHub Copilot. It generated all that code. I didn't write that code from scratch. Um, let's actually take a look at some of this code. It's still bright red, but let's just close down the GitHub 
here. Let's take a look at all of this information. Um, actually, this is just the changes it made. So here we are in the app ASPX. So basically, I want to start off three files we're going to look at. First off, index.html. That really is, if you've built websites before, you know the index.html really is the kind of the, the place that runs by default. It has here um, some metadata and everything, but at the end of the day, it really just has that div root. And that's really where it's going to want to load our React app. Um, it's really kind of a placeholder. We have a script here for the main uh, J, uh, JS file. Um, it's interesting, on the other app I ran er earlier, it created an index.js file if you read the blog post of this version. But it doesn't really matter because basically we just have these different things. So we want to pop over to this JavaScript. And really it's just kind of here importing the React and basically telling me to import the act from app.jx. So it's really that bridge between our application and the index.html. Let's actually pop over to app, uh, the JSX file, which really is where we're going to add a lot of our functionality. And so far, our functionality is really, really simple. It is a function app and it's returning hello world. So simplest thing in the world, and we're exporting that as the default app. So really that's where our code is gonna be, but our code is really just one line at this point. The next video I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna add things like the Power Pages web API, add some other information where we can read a Dataverse data and display that information, but we're not quite there yet. We're just keeping it to the basics. So those are the three main files that get created. And once we're all good with that, then basically what we wanna do uh, of course, test it out. We did, ran Hello World. Our next step is to actually import it into Power Pages as a Power Pages website. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here in the terminal, I'm gonna npm run build, basically meaning I'm gonna compile my code. I believe it did that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually upload our site. We've, we've run it, we've tested it, we've compiled it. Now we need to upload it into Power Pages. So here I'm going to use the pack command. The first thing we need to do is connect to our environment. So to do that, I'll do, I will actually from the terminal, I will go pack auth create dash env because I will need to know the environment. Where do you find the environment GUID? I'll quickly show you. If you're here, I'm in the Power Pages homepage. This could be your Power Apps Maker Portal as well. You'll see here there's a little gear icon. We go session details, and then we can just grab the environment GUID from here. I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to pop back into my terminal and basically paste that in. So here I'm going to pack auth create dash environment. Let's do this, and then it should prompt you for your username. All right, cool. So I've connected to my environment now. Then the next thing we need to do is basically we now want to upload our site. So we use pack pages, upload code site. So this is a little bit different than uploading power pages site using the pack command, it's upload code site. We need to specify the root path and we're already in hello world. So it's basically the path that we're already currently in. And then we want to choose the compiled path. So that's the, the dist path. So this is where all our compiled assets go to. And then site name, I'm just gonna call it Hello World Spa. You can call it whatever you want, but basically we're just giving the site a name so we can recognize it in the Power Pages Maker Portal. So let's just hit enter on this. And then basically what it's doing, it's uploading those uh, components, those assets back up into our Power Pages site. So after a few minutes, you should actually see the code has been uploaded to the site. So we're good here. If we wanna make any changes, couple things to remind you of. Yes, you can go in. We are going to be making in future videos a lot of changes to this app function or adding new functions. Remember to go the NPN run build because um, <laughs> if you don't do this and you upload it, um, your changes aren't going to show up in your Power Pages site. So anyways, we've done that. Let's pop over to our Power Pages site. Um, so basically here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to look from the home page look in the inactive sites. Now I have a few here. Here's that Hello World Spa. That will appear as an inactive site the very first time you upload it because it's uploaded that information into Dataverse, but it's not created an actual website yet. What we're gonna to need to do is hit reactivate. Then again, it's gonna give it a name. And again, it's gonna give it a site web address. I'm just gonna stick with the defaults for now, but you can call it whatever you want. Eventually you could make your own custom domain name, I'm just gonna hit done. And then basically what it's doing now, you've probably seen this a hundred times if you've built other Power Pages site, 
it's creating that Wazure web app that's going to talk to Power Pages. And then we're going to give this a minute, it's going to come up. Now, a couple things to note here in the Power Pages Design Studio. First off, it's gonna say single page application. Um, so that's cool, but we can't do any edits. We can't add pages, we can't do any styling because that code is 100% contained in that React single page application. So we can't use the Design Studio to make any modifications. What we can do is we can take a look at data. So eventually in the future videos, when I talk about getting data, we can take a look and create tables there. Although I still prefer to create tables in the Power Apps Maker portal. Um, within the setup, there are other things like, you know, the security checker and all those other uh, things like that. And then of course security where we're gonna set up web roles and table permissions. Those things are still very important even for single page applications and identity providers. And here you can tell I didn't even run the scan yet. Um, but these are the types of things that are in Power Pages that are gonna be beneficial to these React single page applications. So it's again, uh, merging the best of both worlds. All right, so now that we've done that, let's actually hit preview and see what our site looks like. All right, so we've run our, our, our site. We see the hello world again, uh, really not all that exciting. A couple things, it is in still private mode because it's a developer site, have it private mode, so it is showing that here. But notice in the URL, maybe it's kind of hard to see, but it is a the powerappsportals.com as opposed to the local host. So very, very simple. What we did is we used GitHub Copilot. We created a very simple React app. We took a look at the structure of that React app, the different files that got created, the index.html, the app um, JavaScript file, as well as the main JavaScript file, which basically kind of pulls everything together. So we're going to continue to build more code in our app JavaScript file with other components and I'm gonna do that in future videos. But then basically the, the cool thing here that I really wanted to demonstrate was the fact that we took that React app and we uploaded it into Power Pages. So what that means is at this point, it's very simple, it's a static page, but basically in the future, now what we can do is we can use the Portal Web API, talk to Dataverse, we can implement authentication to make sure that we're authenticated to our regular users and then basically use all the goodness that React can give us in terms of the user controls, the functionality, and use that in a Power Pages site that talks to Dataverse. So that's pretty exciting. Thanks for watching this video. Look forward to the next one coming up where we actually tie this to a Dataverse table and we actually get it to display some information. And then from down the line, we'll take a look at authentication and doing full CRUD capabilities within the single page uh, web applications. Thanks for watching and wait to the next one.